Hey everybody! Now this intergalactic curfew stripping my time travel abilities is making me feel bored. I managed to beat Shafer while reviewing the Goofy movies, and I somehow got 14 minutes out of this. Now I feel like going into Capcom's second arcade stadium for some reason. Hmm, what's this? The very first Street Fighter game? Let's check it out! Well, that's this year's Halloween costume sorted. Now, Street Fighter is an icon in gaming, and while I'm not really into the competitive scene, I'm more so a casual fan of the games like Super Street Fighter 4, Third Strike, my personal favorite, and of course Street Fighter 2. And with how popular and groundbreaking that installment is, on top of its countless revisions over the years, it leaves you wondering where it all began. Famous last words. In 1987, the very first Street Fighter game released in arcades with giant pressure-sensitive buttons for the moves like the DualShock 2 controllers for the PS2, before getting a revised cabinet with six buttons that would become a standard for Capcom's fighting games. This game later got ported to the TurboGrafx-16 CD add-on, and its name strangely got changed to Fighting Street, making it sound like a completely different game altogether. Come on, you son of a gun, put him up! Recently, the original arcade version is readily available on compilations like Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, Capcom Second Arcade Stadium, and also Street Fighter 6. I'm primarily going to play this in Second Arcade Stadium, as I don't have anything to play the new game on, and with the 30th Anniversary Collection, it is really easy to play Dear God Anything Else here. So let's start and see why nobody gives a damn about this game. Well, it's definitely a game from 1987, alright. The rules are quite straightforward, you take on your opponents to lower their health, and you have to win two out of three times for each fight to progress. There are two characters you can play as, those being Ryu and Ken, likely for those playing multiplayer. Since there's no human being alive wanting to play this game, I might as well do this alone. And boy is this game rough. The opponents are relentlessly tough to face off and pretty cheap with their moves, not held by the bad controls. The attacks are so delayed and a lot of times it doesn't feel like I'm hitting these guys. It may be because I'm playing this on the Switch, but I doubt the original arcade cabinet will have been just as good. And if you think hitting your opponent was hard enough, then good luck commanding the special moves. While I got the Hadouken to work every blue moon on Friday the 13th during a leap year, the Shoryuken is so hard to pull off, it might as well be called the Shoryu Can't. Besides, they can often leave you vulnerable, so it's not worth trying out in certain moments. And get this, you can hit your opponent once, and then block their moves until the time runs out, letting you win the round. Yeah, that's real fair. But it's all worth it just to hear your opponent's wisdom. I didn't know the parents from those Peanut specials did voice acting in this game. But after a bunch of fights with these forgettable opponents and clunky bonus rounds, we finally face the god end. Now I don't know what's worse, this being the musical equivalent of Nails on a Chalkboard, or that this sounds better than most pop music nowadays. Sagat is a nightmare to fight. I get that's the point of him being the final boss and all, but the stiff controls here makes a Dark Souls fight look like Once Upon a Monster. Games like this are why the rewind function exists. You have eaten, and then the game's over, with the credit sequence of all the characters you fought. Plus, the scars that God has on his chest in future games came from your final blow. That's pretty cool attention to detail. And that was the very first Street Fighter, alright. After playing this game, I now have greater appreciation for how the sequel became a worldwide phenomenon on top of vastly improving the gameplay altogether. And because of that, this game is incredibly hard to go back to nowadays. Which is something I can't say about another first installment of a mainstay Capcom franchise with Mega Man. While that doesn't have the finesse of future entries, it's still a pretty decent platformer. So with that, there is absolutely no reason to go back to the very first Street Fighter game, unless you're really interested in seeing where it all started. And if at first you don't succeed, try try again. I think Capcom may have taken that advice a bit too literally. Thanks for watching.